the themes in the movie and the Shape of Water are universal, are timeless. They are so timeless that they belong in the realm of fairy tale or fable. You know, they've been done a million times, but they've never been done like this. And the themes, the idea of embracing the otherness, uh, understanding and not transformation as a, as a motor of love, those are very new for me. And they are very much today. And I think that what, what has happened is when we see the movie in Toronto, Telluride, uh, London, Venice, across the board, young, old, parents, kids, they all react with the same warmth. It's a movie that seems to heal a lot uh, and, and allow emotion to flow in a time where emotion doesn't flow that easily. We live in a time of fear and hatred and rage every day on the news and every day on social media and every day in our lives. We are told to fear something, fear the other, fear the other religion, the other immigrants, the other this, the other that, the other gender. And it's a time to embrace the fact that there is no us and them, but only us. And that's what we have. The story has not been influenced by many, by many movies, but the look, yes, it's uh, Douglas Sirk, Powell and Pressburger, you know, particularly the Red Shoes, uh, Black Narcissus, Tales of Hoffman. Uh, I think that uh, the Vincente Minelli, the musicals uh, with Gene, Gene Kelly, you know, the, uh, the charade, Stanley Donnan's work, his camera work, William Wyler, his work with actor and camera, all classic movies, none of them fantastic. None of them in the genre of the fantastic. Well, this is the first creature that I do that is uh, a leading man and a divine being because he's an elemental god of the river. He's not an animal, but he needs to look like an animal. He needs to look like a human. And he needs to, at some point in the movie, look divine. And I mean truly like a, a pagan god of the water. And towards the end of the movie, there's a great moment in which Doug Jones, with his acting, his pose, his you know, uh, look, and the effects, the, it's a complete suit, completely fabricated, no, not a digital effect, except for the eyes, the blinking. And that moment is sublime because the creature transforms for the end. I think this movie has a kinship with Pan's Labyrinth and Devil's Backbone and probably Crimson Peak and the, and the visual, you know, and that is very elaborate. But uh, I think that uh, this is a very special movie. All the others, they are a combination of one or two genres, but this movie is a, a poem, a, a love letter to cinema. So it's a comedy, melodrama, musical, spy thriller, everything. and. Uh, and it's a very classical looking movie, beautiful, gorgeous, lavish, but thematically very, very new. I think the opening is beautiful, the closing, the, the scene in the bathroom between them, and when they sink the bathroom, they fill it with water, the monologue, the monologue of uh, Eliza to Giles, these are things to look out for, and, and they're truly magical. I think that if you talk to people about a theme or an idea, and you're used today and the sort of news of the day, it becomes very antagonistic very fast. People go, I don't believe that. They have an opinion. But if you tell them once upon a time, there was this girl with no voice and this creature that was trapped and, you know, it's sort of they lower their guard. They allow the fantasy to, to diminish the threat and therefore it becomes more deep, your contact with the story. So I think there's a value in thinking about this creature, not, not as monsters or things like that, but as embodiments of concepts. The creature here is literally the shape of water.